and welcome back to Devon Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we're here for Slow Stitching Saturday. We're starting a new project called Birdsville Cushion by Wendy Williams. So let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while I venture into a new project. All right, so as I said in the intro, we are working on the uh, Birdsville cushion. It is by Wendy uh, Williams, already forgotten what the name is. And basically, I'm just going to show you what I got in the kit and um, I'll let you know where you can get that from. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back from someone um, about it and once I know I will uh, put that in the links down below. But we're just going to talk about some of the things that we're going to need today. We might do a little bit of tracing out and cutting out and uh, get making a start on this. Next week I will actually have a little project for you uh, to work on if you haven't got this one, especially for those viewers that are overseas uh, because I only know where to to get this here in Australia um, and it might be a little bit expensive for you but and I'm not sure whether Just Patchwork is where I got it from and I'm not too sure whether they actually um, ship uh, overseas or anything like that so I thought well I'll create a little pattern for you and that will be ready for you for next week and you can make a little cushion yourself so it's just something small for your dough bowl or something like that all right, so what are we going to be, apart from that, what else are we going to be talking about today? We're going to have an update on the uh, Borrow Table Runner. I almost have it finished, not quite. I think I just need another week. I just really couldn't get into it yesterday. As you can hear, my voice is still a little bit uh, scratchy, and so that's taking a little bit of time of resting and just not talking. Not that I talk when I stitch anyway, but it seems to be as soon as I pick up a book or some stitching, everybody wants to talk to me. As soon as I'm not doing anything and just watching TV, no one wants to talk to me. So, <laughs> I, but anyway, at least they're talking to me, right? So basically, yeah, we're just gonna plot along like we've done with the Borrow um, uh, table runner in the last three weeks. So I will keep working on that and once I have got all the stitching done, it's just unfortunate that I got sick this week because I just really wasn't up to doing a lot of stitching. So I did a little bit of cross stitch and then I'd fall asleep. I didn't do a great deal. I worked on many projects but I didn't do a great deal. So if you haven't seen that video and what I got up to in my stitching wise this week, head over to uh, watch that after this video. Uh, that is my floss tube and that's episode no, uh, 92. All right, so I'm gonna move the camera around and we're going to have a look at what I've done on my Borrow project. All right, so just bear with me while I get this moved in into place. Make sure that you can see everything that is going on. All right, so we have our Borrow uh, project. Now, last week, if you didn't see last week's video, we actually, I showed you how to uh, put this border on by hand so you can do your whole project by hand and not have to worry about a sewing machine at all so if you don't sew or you're a beginner sewer you can definitely do this project if you've done embroidery before you can definitely do this project without a problem so i showed you how to put that on by hand and you can see there that it's just stitched down i haven't put any other borders on this week because as i said i'm still doing the stitching so the the stitching that i'm doing is all of this here okay and that is our um, sashiko stitching and as I said I've mixed it up a little bit and I started to add some crosses I went a little bit diagonal on this one um, I went straight on these ones but I'm thinking that I might put a little bit of diagonal over and it is definitely a work in progress uh, this should be finished and ready to go next week because I plan on working on it some more today I plan on working on it every day until it's done it, as I said it was just unfortunate that um, I got sick and um, yeah so that, you know, that happens. Sometimes life gets in the way. But I will be finishing this whole thing by hand. I won't act, none of this will actually be touching uh, the sewing machine, including my binding. I'm going to be sewing um, a quilt binding on this as well. And that will be done by hand as well. So that includes putting it onto it. Most people will put it on by, um, 
by their sewing machine, I'm going to give it a go and put it on. I mean, many, many years ago, people made quilts and they didn't have um, sewing machines and stuff like that. So I'm going to do the whole thing by um, hand and see how we go. So this is going to make an appearance each week, but I'm pretty sure that you don't want to sit there and just watch me sew for half an hour and uh, um, do the stitching. So we're going to be moving on to something else. And I have always wanted to do, um, wanted to do wool felt applique so that's what we're going to be targeting today all right so i'm going to set that aside we'll keep working on that i will keep posting updates over on the um over on the community tab so if you want to see what's going on with any of the projects that we're working on for slow stitching saturday or even just anything else you can actually i'm just going to drop this down just a touch ready for what we're going to do next and then that's out of my face my line of sight all right, so we can see what's going on there. So basically um, what we will be doing is I will be just posting updates and you can also follow me over on Instagram at Devana Lee Design Studio. And I post up, not everything, but I post up some things over there as well. I'm mostly posting my updates for any of my videos here um, on YouTube. So you can find that all on the community tab. Now, I hear you saying you don't know where the community tab is. That is so easy to find. All you need to do is head to our homepage. So when you come to the channel, you come to the homepage. Okay, and that's where all of my playlists are listed. Okay, and up the top, you'll see home, which is where you'll be um, when you first find it. Uh, when you come to my channel, then you'll see videos, playlists, and then you'll see the community tab and also an about tab as well. So the about tab just has like my business info, um, where you can contact me, where you can find me on social media and places like that. But there is a community tab there and the community tab is where I am posting all of my updates. I also do any um, announcements for the channel or anything like that, anything new that might be coming uh, or anything basically that um, has to do with the channel or what's going on behind the scenes. All right, so let's talk a little bit about we're going to switch back to the camera let's talk a little bit about what i'm working on today now as i said i got my kit for the uh, birdsville cushion okay now for those that don't know um maybe the significance of that name now i the, there is a place here in um in australia called birdsville i don't know if it's got anything to do with that but it's called the birdsville um cushion and every time i look at it i just think of the place birdsville uh, there's a lot of things that go on um, out there. I think there's the the Birdsville, um, there's a, like a variety charity type thing where they do um, car racing from one point in Australia to another and they generally go through Birdsville. Um, so there's that and then there's the races and I think they have camel races out there as well. Their um, their B&S balls, uh, Bachelor and Spinster's ball, balls, Outback balls are pretty um popular as well so there's a lot of things that happen in the place of birdsville so if you're from overseas and you've never heard of that town do a google search it'll come up there's lots of little things that happen it's an outback town so it's very um way away away from everything and i'm pretty sure that is on the it's up in the corner of new south wales and i think it's very close to a border town it may even be a border town not too crash hot on my geography this morning brain's a little still a little bit foggy from being sick all right so when I got my kit my kit came with um, and I'll just bring this up a little bit for you okay so when I got my kit as I said I got it from just uh, uh, patchwork and they are a little shop that gets they generally can be found at all the quilt shows and everywhere like that so if you've never heard of them before and you're going to a quilt show, I guarantee you they will be there. You will you will definitely spot this cushion. Um, there's also another quilt. Um, I think it's the Seasons. I, I think it is. It's actually the Seasons and it's a big circle and it's all done in a wool felt and it's a big wall hanging. It's absolutely massive. Okay, so um, you'll see that they have that always there. Um, but I wanted to get this. Now, I first approached the felt lady. Now, anybody that's on Instagram, that follows any sort of crafting or anything like that you will probably have seen the felt lady she is based not too far from me she's about two and a half hours from where i'm at out um out west of me and um well she was when i first met her i don't know if she's still out there but i'm pretty sure she is um 
but yeah, she has a great, great range of wool felt. So basically, if you hit her up on Instagram, just say, hey, I've seen the Birdsville cushion. Someone mentioned that you might have kits or you can kit it up. Um, because when I spoke to her in May at the, um, at the Quill Show, she said that she could kit it up, but she had no kits there. But she was selling the pattern as well. So you might be able to get it all from her if you have no joy from Just Patchwork. Um, I will put all their contact details down below in the description as well. I don't stock any of this stuff. Um, I'm very new to wool. I've done it before in the past many, many, many years ago. And it was just a basic flower that I did on a little coaster. Um, and I think I gave that as a present to someone. Like I'm talking years ago, like I think even before Savannah was born or just when she was born. So 20 odd years ago. Um, she's 18 this year in October. Um, so yeah. Oh, and it's my birthday today too. So I'm spending it with you guys. I forgot. <laughs> I have not been well this week. I have actually lost track of days. So yeah, we've got all our birthdays happen in August, September and October in our house. Um, so we have Neralee's birthday on the 8th of August. Then mine is today the 27th. And then my husband's is on the 21st of September. Then um, Savannah's is on the um, 6th of October and then lastly we have um, little Mia who has she's not living with us anymore she's back with her mum but she's a little Halloweeny and her birthday is on Halloween 31st of October so yeah and then I, my eldest daughter is out on her own and the 3rd of March <laughs> so everybody's got a birthday happening and it's a very very big couple of months in our and we're all like a few weeks apart as well so it's quite funny how it all worked out so yeah it's all done and dusted in this part of the year for us and then we all move on anyway back to this um so basically i got this kit it came with um all the felt that i am going to need and i'll just bring the picture in and then you've got the backing fabric and also the base fabric and then there is a recommendation that you use some calico for the lining for the cushion okay so that will go up against all your embroidery i i assume now I have opened this up and a, a few other, so that is what you get in the kit. So you can see there, we've got all the colors of the wool and you can see all the colors there. So I'm not gonna pull all that out right now. Um, it also comes with your pattern pieces and then it comes with all of your instructions. Now I'm not going to be giving out any sort of detail on what um, the measurements or anything are but I am, I will talk about the stitches that I'm doing in the embroidery. So we'll talk about like if it's a back stitch or a satin stitch or a whip stitch or a French knot or anything like that. And so once I get to that stitching point, um, so today we'll be just doing some cutting out. We're going to go through some of the tools that we need as well. Um, but everything you need for the pattern is in there. And um, we're going to talk about a few different things that I have found easy to use in the past and I'm sure other people will agree. Now obviously you're going to need rotary cutters, um, rulers, you're going to need thread snips, you're going to need little scissors. Um, I can't find, I must, have ha I must have them in the bedroom. I have another pair of scissors that um, have a really fine point. These are good for cutting um, longer areas and I got these from the uh, lovely Jenny Trask and these ones I'm pretty sure these ones yeah these ones do these ones are great for traveling they fold down somehow which is it's this end is it yeah that's it uh, that's it and then once they um, fold down they just go in and they look like a little pair of glasses but they come out and then there's this little bit you just got to get to clip out and then they're a decent sized pair of scissors so I use these for traveling because I can just um, close them up and um, yeah I put them in there and they're not going to stab into anything not get caught in any fabric or anything like that so I tend to use them for bigger pieces uh, when I'm doing applique or little shapes that are a little bit you know rounded and stuff like that they're a little bit more bigger then I've got my little thread snips that I like to use for my embroidery and they have a curve so that means that I can get them very close to my work without the blade cutting 
um, touching or cutting anything. You're going to need some embroidery needles and a little pin cushion to put them in. It makes it super easy to find them. Or alternatively, you can use what I call a needle minder uh, in the cross stitch um, area of the uh, channel. You will hear me talk about uh, cross stitch uh, supplies and stuff and that's a little needle minder that's one that just sits on my little stand off to the side here it, as you heard it's metal uh, a couple of other things that we are possibly going to need uh, your general sewing supplies you're also going to need your embroidery floss as well um, I didn't pull all them out because I probably won't get to stitching today we're just going to go through some of the little tips and tricks that I have learned along the way which as I said were many many years ago and I've done a little bit of a refresher in the last couple of weeks because I was like, did I remember that correctly and stuff like that. So we've done a bit of that. Now, one thing I do find really handy is um, applique pins. Now, they are a lot smaller than your regular pins. So I'll just bring in my uh, glass head pins. So we've got some glass head pins here. So you can see there. And then we've got some flat pins. And these are often used for... Um, for applique as well then we've got um, some decorative pins and then we've got these little applique pins and they're very very tiny here we go we've got one here so you can see here they're a lot smaller than the other ones so I'll just put these two on my hand so that is a regular um, glass head pin and then we've got an applique pin it's almost half the size the head is smaller and they are generally glass head as well okay now excuse me now you'll have to excuse me my voice will croak and carry on and um yeah so you can get them um my favorite brand of anything when it comes to notions um is matilda's own but any brand of um applique pin will be fine you'll be able to find them alternatively if you don't have applique pins you can use um dressmaking pins okay because they they are these are a little bit longer but they're fine and that's what you want okay and they can you can just use the tip of them and you can get them out of the way the other thing that you will probably find very valuable is some glue sticks okay so we've got i'll just take this one out i like to um these are all just my supplies that i have here so this is a glue stick that um it just winds out um, it's a fabric glue pen. It's a June Taylor one. I find them to be uh, pretty good. They um, don't dry out. The, the lid stays on really secure. The turning mechanism never fails me. Um, but I use, I do use this one um, for doing any sort of applique and stuff like that. You can use a sew line pen as well. You don't need a lot of it. Um, and the other one that I use is a acid free. Now, you can, these are washable as well. Um, as I said, you don't need a lot of them. Um, these are very easy to apply on. They're low tack as well. Um, and they're acid free and non-toxic as well. So these are like the school, school ones. So they have to be non-toxic and they have to be acid free as well. Okay. And it dries, it dries clear, the purple one. Uh, and you can pick them up at Big W, Kmart, places like that. This one here, the June Taylor one, I got this one off Amazon. All right, so basically, um, and I'll leave a link down below where you can get all this sort of stuff um, as well. So they are some, that is something that I like to use when I come to doing my layering, okay? And we don't use a lot of that. Like it's just a little bit, a little dab, it's just to hold it there so when you're stitching, you're not, you know having to fight with it to try and keep it in place um, and you know if you're going to use pins you can use pins as well but sometimes when um, I do the layering you might have the layer like you'll have a piece down and then you're going to put a piece on top it's just it's it's easier to just put a little bit of glue there sometimes and um, it just holds it in place while you quickly stitch it down whereas the pins will hold the base um, when you're doing some layering the other thing that um, I'm going to be using through mine and a lot of people that do uh, felt um, applique use freezer paper and for those that don't know what freezer paper is it is a way of doing applique without having to use fusible web or anything like that so basically what happens is we will draw our picture on the on the dull side so you can see here is the dull side and then we've got a shiny side and where my light is situated it's really good for showing um, 
shiny sides. So you can see there. So we're going to trace out onto the um, dull side and then we will attach it to our felt and I'll show you how to do a little bit of that in just a second. And another um, thing you're gonna need is an iron and an ironing pad. And I highly recommend that you get an applique sheet. I will have to give this a bit of a clean before we start it because I haven't cleaned it since the last time I used it. And this is just a Teflon um, sheet. I have, I had these in stock but they just flew out the door at the last retreat because they are perfect for um, doing anything with an iron where there is any sort of glue involved, any adhesive um, papers or fusible webs or anything like that for just protecting your um, iron. And that's really what you wanna do. I mean, your iron can be cleaned, but what if you don't notice that there's a bit of glue on the bottom and then you go and press on a piece of light fabric, you've got glue now scorched onto your, um, onto your fabric and it's very hard to remove. You're also going to need some needles. Now, I have big chunky fingers. Now I use um, embroidery needles are great um, with a bigger eye, but because we're probably gonna be using two to three strands of thread, you might find it a little bit difficult to get through your embroidery needles. So I recommend that you use, um, where are they? Um, do I have them here? They must be. Um, I had them the other day, what did I do with them? Anyway, I will find them and show you what them look, they look like. But I use a chenille needle. Um, chenille needles are sharp and they're a little bit longer, so I find them easier to use for my embroidery. Um, and you can get the finer chenille. So you can have um, a thicker chenille needle and then you can have a, a little bit finer in different sizes. So um, I don't know where my packet is. I thought it was in my sewing box, but it doesn't seem to be there. So I don't know where that is. Short of that, you can also use your sashiko needles. So you can see here, I've got some sashiko needles that um, are a little bit shorter and they've got a smaller eye as well. These are quite sharp as well. And they these are built for going through multiple layers because you're doing um, sashiko or borrow. So you can use those as well. So they're, they're some of the ones that you would like to definitely have in your kit. So embroidery, if you can get your floss through. And generally embroidery needles, you can get two strands of floss through without too much of a problem. And you probably want to have a needle thread or two. They all come in handy. All right, so that's pretty much all we're going to need as well in the way of tools. Um, also, you might want to have a pointy, really sharp point of um, needles as, uh, needles, <laughs> a pair of scissors that have a sharp point. So if you've got to get into a point for your project, you can do that. All right, now, we are doing wool felt um, applique today, but there's nothing stopping you from doing this as a raw edge applique. Now, you can do all the embroidery on it and all of that sort of stuff. So if you don't wanna do, you don't wanna go out to the expense of buying um, wool felt or anything like that, and you can get like some places sell scraps and stuff like that. So just check out what they've got. Um, but if you wanna use your scraps, you can do that too. So um, as I said, the pat I'll have a pattern for you next week. We're just gonna go through some of the tips and tricks that I'm gonna do along the way. And you can apply these to your, um, your raw edge applique because you can do embroidery on this. And when I say raw edge applique with your fabric, it's just gonna be on the edge. You're not actually going to cover the edge or anything like that. So as I'm talking, I will talk about both ways that you can do it. Um, and I will try and find some pictures of some stuff that I've done where I've used my sewing machine and we've done free motion embroidery, which is something else that we're going to be doing on our slow stitching um, Saturday, but we're going to be doing it by hand. And then I'll talk about things that you can do on the machine. Actually, I'll probably do that. I'll probably do, um, yeah, I think I'll do that crafting with DDs because we'll use the sewing machine. Because crafting with DDs, I'm using either or I, like either one. I'm either doing slow stitching or I'm doing um, on the machine because I'll be doing patchworking and stuff like that. So we can also look at doing um, some free motion embroidery. Um, and so for that, you'll need different things. So we'll talk about that another day though. Um, so, all right, grab yourself a cuppa, okay? Uh, grab yourself a drink of water, grab your craft of choice. Maybe while you're listening to this, because you don't necessarily have to watch, I'm going to talk you through it. 
um, while you're listening to this, you can have a bit of a rummage through your um, stash and see if you've got some wool felt. Now for your little project next week, I'm thinking that we might do a, either a fall inspired one for those overseas and a spring inspired one uh, for those that are here in the Southern Hemisphere because we're going into spring and we will be into September next week. And um, so I'll either do a fall halloween -y one or a, and a spring one. So you can do both or you can do either. They'll both be in the one PDF so you can give it a go. So that way you can, you know, mix it up a little bit because I know that I have a lot of people that watch me from uh, the United States and the UK and you are going into autumn slash fall. Um, we don't call it fall here in um, the Southern Hemisphere. We call it autumn. So um, yeah. All right, so grab yourself a cuppa. I'm going to uh, grab a couple of other things, some scissors and stuff like that, and a seat, uh, because I'm standing up right now, and we're gonna get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be um, doing is tracing out our pattern. Okay, so you can print it, print it off, photocopy it, do whatever you need to do. You might need a light box. Um, generally, I find that I don't really need a light box. Um, I've just got to double check how much and I'm just going to start like with the the little bits and pieces that I've got to do um, I'm just Having a look if it tells me how many things of each one I've got to um, Cut out <clears throat> Okay I'm going to start with the leaves, okay, because I need 70 of those. <laughs> so I've just torn off, I've got a whole roll of freezer paper um, and it, like it's, it's, um, it's, it comes in, let me just have a look. There's 13 and a half yards in a box, in that box, that Reynolds freezer paper. And I find that the Reynolds freezer paper is the best one to use. I've used a couple of generic ones and whatnot and they're not that crush hot so and you can get if you just do a google search it'll come up but again i will leave any links that you need down below for you and then that way you can um have a look and see what what um whether it suits your budget or not okay now um some are, i've had a couple of questions about links and stuff like that where they find everything when you come to if you don't know there's show notes underneath each video and there's a little V just near the subscribe button on your phone. If you click that, it comes down. Um, if you're on your computer, it'll say show more. Click that and it'll drop down and it'll have all the information there. Now, some of the links that I have there are not um, affiliate links. And then there's some that are affiliate links. Um, and so if you buy something from that affiliate link, basically what that means is I get a small commission um, you don't pay any more for it. I just get a small commission and that helps support the channel so I can do more crafts and stuff like that and show you what we're doing. All right, so as I said, I need 70 leaves and basically we've got three colors that are in the kit. We've got a medium green, a lime green and a leaf green and a red that we're using. All right, so I'm gonna start tracing those out. Now, as I said, we use the dull side of the um, paper. So we, what do we have? A three different greens, medium, lime, and leaf green. That looks like that. And a red. Oh, and it, you know what? It's actually, it looks to be in order. So I might not mess this up any <laughs> because yeah. All right. I'm not going to mess that up any at all. <laughs> We'll just leave that over there and pull out these ones only. So that is the felt that we're going to be using. This is a wool felt that came in the kit. It actually feels quite nice. It's um, it's felted really well. It's not loose or anything like that. So if you do get a kit from um, uh, Just Patchwork, the wool is very, very nice. Now I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just got the kit from them at the quilt show. So um, it is it is really well felted. Some wool felts you can get feel like they're not felted enough. They're a little bit of a, it's not a weave because it's felted. So it, it almost feels like a loose we, we, woven fabric. Whereas this is really nicely. So that's gonna stitch up really, really well. And we've just got to get our tracing um, from one for this and I'm just going to see if I need my light box, which I don't. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the 
you can see underneath if I put the light box on it's going to reflect up on you so I'm not going to put the um put it on there um because I don't you won't be able to see anything anyway so basically we need leaves okay and um unfortunately I can't knock well I could probably cover that there but it's just going to become problematic so um and then we just got to trace it out so I'm just going to just um, sketch them out and because I've got to leave a little bit between each one as well I'm um, and I'm going to number them as I go so I don't lose count that's another like when you're doing something even when I do applique and I've got to trace it out I find it a lot easier just to mark things out as I'm going because then I don't have to sit there and keep counting it so there's tip number one mark your numbers as you're going okay and we're just going to do that and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to interlock that together to get the most out of it now when we cut these out like with any applique when we cut these out and we've got our little pieces what we want to do is we want to leave a little bit so we're not going to cut on that line until after we've put it on the felt okay so let's just get these all traced out and um, I might put a little bit of music here for you and then that way you can um, it'll speed it up a bit I guess
Right, so we've done that now. We've traced out all those. So that makes it super easy as you've seen. You just basically trace them out and you don't need to put any of the markings or anything on that. That's just your pattern piece that comes in it. So um, you don't need to put any of the markings. That's just telling you what your stitches are going to be in your embroidery. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper scissors, which I forgot to mention at the beginning. Paper scissors are great. Um, I also have these as paper scissors as well. I um, They are a Jim Holtz, uh, sorry, Tim Holtz, Jim, <laughs> a Tim Holtz um, pair of scissors, but I don't use them for fabric. I Because they're such a different shape than what I normally use, I use them for paper. Um, and sometimes I'll, they're still really sharp and I get them sharpened all the time when the um, scissor guy comes and they'll be sharp enough to go through both the paper and the felt as well. So, um, well, I hope anyway. So, um, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these out very roughly and um, we're going to have a mul like it's going to be like autumn in here, a ton of leaves. <laughs> So we just cut around those. Um, you don't have to cut on the line, you just want a little bit extra. And the reason you want the little bit extra is so when we do cut our felt out, we're cutting on the line. All right, so I am just going to get a little container so I can drop them in. Got one just behind me. And then that way they're not gonna fly everywhere. Now I don't want to have a, a lot around each leaf because that's going to take away from my wool felt. Um, you know, that I'm going to end up with more scraps and whatnot. So I get close, but not super close, if that makes sense. So about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch all the way around that line. And you can eyeball that, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just, yeah. All right, get rid of my rubbish as I go. I'm notorious for just chucking it on the ground terrible for it and that's exactly why I don't have carpet in my sewing room because I get super busy and then I'm just throwing things everywhere I mean I clean up after each project so it's not so bad but yeah so um Lots of you already know that I've been very sick with COVID this week and I am still in isolation. So I won't be doing anything for my birthday today. Um, I will be just sitting here. I'm actually home, going to be home alone um, because everybody's out working and doing their thing. And um, I think Nara Lee's just left for work or she's just about to leave for work. Um, and Oh, poor me gets to spend it in my sewing room. You can hear I'm sounding a lot better. I've still got the mics on. Um, I'm really good at throwing my voice. Like I can be very loud when I need to be. Um, so having the mics on is actually helping me not to project my voice. I, um, you know, if you didn't you project your voice as a child, you weren't heard in my family, especially when there was family get togethers and all the rest of it. And anybody that comes from a non-English speaking background and has lots of family and family that celebrates and stuff like that, when the families get together, it's loud. They're all trying to talk over one another. There's English in there, there's, you know, Italian being spoken, there's a, a bit of this and a bit of that being spoken, and um, yeah, so it does, <laughs> it gets quite loud. Lots of laughter and, and all that sort of stuff, and so it's a little bit raucous, and so I've always been able to throw my voice, so to speak, so I can be standing on one side of the room and I can talk, and someone on the other side of the room will actually be able to hear me quite clearly. Um, that so hence why my voice probably goes a bit quicker than most other people so I'm trying not to project my voice and because I haven't had good microphones in the past either you'll probably notice with a lot of my my old um, phone that I used to record on was really the audio was pretty crappy to say the least um, for picking up audio so I had to project like so it sounds like I'm shouting so any of my videos prior to 2021 turn the volume down 
<laughs> before you start. I go and check them because I'll get a comment on them and to like I can read the comment but sometimes I'll go to the video just to because I've done it like five or six years ago just to understand what their question is a little bit better um you know because I'll ask some obscure question and so I'll go and I'll press play and it's like poof, out of the out of the phone at me and it's like oh girl you can yell <laughs> but that's why because I didn't have um I didn't have a great microphone in my like the phones now my phone I've got a mic connected to this this um camera phone here um and my audio is coming through the mics but for the most part I don't have a mic on I just use my um my phone mic on my new phone which is the ultra the Samsung ultra and I'm not affiliated with them but brilliant phone for recording and the mic and everything like that and I've even had it where I've been outside and it's been a little bit windy and it hasn't been an issue and I've even walked away like the the sound does drop down a bit but I've walked away but you can still hear me talking and what I'm saying um just over there so that's a really good mic on it I'm, I'm really happy with it but because my my voice is a little like my throat's really still really sore um i'm using the mics on this so i could get a uh, better audio so and the camera's quite away from me and so i can um talk and it still picks it up and when i go into my editing software i can raise the volume a little bit as well so it makes it a little bit better so i probably should have a warning label on my videos <laughs> be careful loud sound <laughs> woman's voice deafening i've had lots of well wishes as well from everybody so thank you very much for that i do appreciate that um it's always nice to know that people are thinking of you so see here where i've come a bit close i will just try to go through on the center of that and i'm still not cutting on the line so it's going to make it a little bit easy um still to cut out that shape and worst case scenario is I can just make that leaf a little bit smaller if I need to like it's not going to be that much of an issue no one's going to know just you and me um, so leave a comment down below and let me know what you are um, making today are you creating something are you working on your borrow still um, are you creating something completely different I know this is not really exciting watching me cut leaves out but you get the general idea we might just move on from this and yeah that's what we'll do won't we just move on all right so you can see there that I've cut around the leaves I've cut and cut off most of the the uh, fabric uh, fabric the the freezer paper um, and that's going to make it easy to um, get rid of that rubbish and I'll just get rid of the rest of the leaves I'll cut the more of them out in a moment so that's going to make it super easy when we go to cut out our felt so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire up the iron and I'm going to grab my ironing pad and then we're going to lay our leaves and we're also going to get our Teflon and we're going to lay our leaves um, down onto our felt our uh, and then we'll get our Teflon sheet and we're going to press that on because what happens is this adheres itself to the excuse me to the felt without leaving any residue on it and it makes it easy to cut it out now if you don't have freezer paper and you're just using normal everyday printer paper you can pop it on and then you just get your pin your applique pin and you just pin it in place okay now i have seen other techniques where you can staple it on um, and then you just remove the staples and it doesn't affect like you don't want to rip the staples out you want to get a staple remover um, and you can pin that and that just pinches the staples out i've seen that i don't like to do that because i'm worried that i'm going to wreck my felt 
basically. I don't think, you, like I've seen heaps of people do it and it doesn't wreck it. I'm just paranoid that I'm going to. So my favorite thing to use is the freezer paper method. All right, so I'm just going to fire up the um, iron and uh, set up the ironing pad and everything and then we're going to start pressing our leaves on. Okay, so we have our iron oh, just heating up. Now you want to have your iron at a medium heat and no steam. Okay, this is a dry iron thing that we're doing. Excuse me. All right, so once that's he heated up, well, as I said, all we're going to do is we're going to grab our fabric and we've got our three, uh, four different fabrics. So we've got a red, a dark green, a medium green, and then a lime green. Okay, this is referred to in the pattern as leaf green, um, lime, red, and I think this is just called dark green, medium, I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm trying not to show any, like really go support the designer. She's done a lot of effort and to put this together. And if you really like it, as I said, just patchwork or hit, hit up the felt lady on Instagram. I'll leave all the links down below where you can contact these people and find out uh, that I, I don't have a, um, a coupon code or anything like that. Um, unfortunately but if I talk to any of them during the week and I can get a discount I will get a discount for it trying to get a discount for you all right so this is where you really need your Teflon sheet um I can't stress this enough and um you want to make sure that it's clean I've got my rag here and it just it just wipes off I just use a microfiber um cloth it's got a rough edge and it's got a smooth edge and I just rub the rough edge across and that takes a lot of it off you can see there you just wipe it off and I don't do it as soon as I've finished using it I let it sit for a day or two before I do it and then it just rubs off it's just like a dust sort of thing then um, you know put a little bit of elbow grease into it it'll come off um, I use this all the time like it is such an invaluable tool um, to use and you can use a little bit of water as well if you want, but mine never leaves the sewing room. Um, it's just easier not to have it venture out because that's when it starts to get misplaced. So you can see there how easy that just comes off. All right, so this is the side that I'm going to use. And um, I'm just going to... Oh, it's not going to work today. My pencil usually works on it, but lately... It... I think I've changed pencils. I had a different, like a softer lead. All right, so I'm just going to pop a pin with the bow on it. And I know that that's the side that's going to go down onto my, um, onto my wool applique. So I know that that's the clean side. So there's no risk of me putting some glue or anything on there. So I'm just making sure that we get all of that off. And that's how easy it is to clean. You can see there that that has come up really well. I've got the other side to do. Um, that's another reason why I've just put the pin on it. Um, so because I know I haven't done the other side. Okay. And I forgot to do this before I got on camera. It's naughty me. But this is, that's the whole thing about Slow Stitching Saturday. It's a vlog style. It's just what I do in um, the studio when I'm working on crafts and I'm just sharing my tips and tricks with you as well and I appreciate you coming across along for the journey it's a sort of a way of me recording um because I'm terrible at journaling so like I would love I love the concept and the idea of journaling everything that I do but that isn't a hobby in itself and I am not good at it <laughs> like I'm really not good at like I, I'm I'm happy to do it and when I do it I go for it and I love excuse me and I love doing it what I'm terrible at is keeping up with it and it's not because I get bored because I don't I love coloring in I've got coloring in books and stuff like that I've got a whole cupboard full of different um watercolors and paints uh, not not paints like pen paints and stuff like that so I've got all like uh, cupboard down the back there that is all stationary stuff coloring in stuff I've got multitudes of different sorts of pencils and um, I've even got pencils that I use on my fabric ink tent, tense pencils um, that I can use on fabric and stuff like that and I still manage not to keep up with journaling so this is uh, this is going to be a great way for me to um 
just basically video log what I'm working on as well and you get to come along for the ride and um, yeah and you know see how lazy I actually am by not keeping things clean you know most people would have cleaned this and um, I just use it that often that I'd be cleaning it all the time <laughs> and I do like if I'm normally I don't have it on both sides but what happened last time is I didn't clean it before I got on camera so I had to use the side that was clean and you want it to be clean because you don't want this stuff to get onto your um, iron and all that stuff that I'm taking off this is actually glue from applique stuff and or um, the basted glue so you really want to make sure that you do clean it um, but I was in the middle of a tutorial when I was using it and I thought, oh, bugger, I didn't clean it. So I just flipped it over and, um, yeah, oh, but I've got to clean it now because <laughs> we're doing this with wool felt. All right. So now what I'm doing, the reason I'm still leaving that pin in there. Now that iron can go on there. And these, this is, oh, I've had this for a long time. Um, this particular, I had another one that was twice the size of this one and I cut it in half and um, a lot of you will probably remember Beck. she used to be on the channel doing craft when she was working here and stuff like that. Um, I gave half to her and um, kept the other half for myself and um, that one basically, I don't even know what happened to that, it got mislaid um, when we were at a retreat, someone might, might have accidentally taken it home, neither here nor there, I don't care about that, it's, you know, accidents happen, and um, it wasn't labelled or anything like that, so the person could have pretty much thought it was theirs, and and that's fine, and um, yeah, so I, I got some um, more, and so I've had this one, this would be at least five years old now, four or five years old because I had that cut one that I used to take to retreats and everything and then this one that just stays on my um up near my ironing, ironing station up there um yeah so now that's nice and clean we've got a pin on one side now I'm leaving the pin there because I know that this is the side that's going to go down onto my um wool felt all right so let's grab a wool felt okay and we're going to lay some leaves down on this all right, and I'm just going to, oh, I didn't cut much off that one. I'll just trim that off. I could have killed Savannah. She used glue on my scissors. These are the best scissors. You get these from Woolworths here in Australia. They're the turtle shell ones. They are the best scissors for paper and all the rest. They stay so sharp. They, this pair here, um, I've had about 10 years now and she used a glue she opened up a glue thing the other day with it I'm like are you kidding and now it's stuck so now I've got to get in there with a little file and get it off <laughs> all right so I'm just randomly grabbing the leaves out there was all different sorts of ones and I'm just going to um get them in as close as possible because I don't want to waste any felt so basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to get it in like I'm going to get it in maybe take some more paper off if I need to um, because the more paper that's on the more felt is going to get wasted okay all right I'm not going to cut these up individually I'm just going to um, lay them down like so and I'm going to fill up the space as much as I can and then I will grab my iron and my teflon making sure that I'm not going to iron where that pin is um, so if you've got glass head pins that's a good idea to have that now let me just that should just be heating up that leaf just moved I don't want that to move all right so now you are going to get a little bit of waste of felt okay let's just get that straight off the bat you are going to have waste now you can also do this with um fabric so we'll talk a little bit about that because the that was a it just feels a little bit too hot so i've just turned it down a little bit more so i've gone my iron i've put it i put it onto a medium heat and i've just gone between a low heat and a medium heat because it was just a tad bit it felt a little bit too hot so i'm just like going to let that cool down it's got to be a dry iron okay and it also 
it, you'll need to hold it down a little bit, okay? And your Teflon sheet, put that down, and then that way you're not going to scorch your wool felt. Now, if you want to do this, you don't want to do this with wool felt, you can do this with fabric, okay? You just do exactly what I'm doing with the, the stitches and stuff like that, and it's going to be raw edge applique, all right? Because this is a raw edge felt and felt doesn't fray so what will happen is when you put your leaves down you will go you will do a back stitch as to opposed to a whip you can do a whip stitch I'll rephrase that you can do a whip stitch but you will need to make sure that they're a little bit closer so it's probably going to be easier wherever I do a whip stitch for you to do a um a back stitch or a running stitch okay so we talked about running stitch last week when we were or the last couple of weeks when we've been doing um, the sashiko and so you can do this and you'll just have it'll be textured so you know if you don't know what raw edge applique is there's a, there's a couple of different varieties of applique so we're doing wool felt applique right now you can do needle turn applique so that's where the edge of the fabric is turned under and then you stitch it down i have a cheats method way of doing that um and then there is raw edge applique you can do machine applique you can do applique in many different ways you can do free free motion um embroidery applique there's all sorts of things that you can do so if you're going to do this and you're going to do a little pattern and if you want to go and do a pattern today just go and look for coloring in pages and find leaves and all that and make a make a display make it something artistic a collage if you will um, of different things and coloring pages are great for that all right and i've also got a pinterest um, board as well which i'll link up down below and you can go and suss that out as well that has all different sorts of info, inspiration on there for you. It's just more of an inspiration board than an actual how-to board or anything like that. Um, and so basically, you can just create a collage. And that's pretty much what we're doing today is just doing that. But you can do it with normal fabric. All right, so you've seen there that I just tell, I just um, pop that over there. I've just put the iron on that and now that is now stuck down. So it's the shiny side that we've put down and that's sort of stuck. This one's not, I didn't put enough heat on that. But you can see there, they're not really lifting off. So they're going to be um, stuck on enough for me to handle them and cut them out. All right, and that's what you want to do. And you can use this method, as I was saying, with normal fabric as well, okay? If you do it with fusible um, web, you're going to have to reverse your images. This way you don't actually have to reverse your images. And then um, as you've seen, I just trace them out. All right, but so you can use the freezer paper way. You can also do this for hexagons as well. You don't necessarily need to have the cardstock in your hexagons because freezer paper is a method that was used many, many years ago. And originally I was taught how to do it with freezer paper. Um, so yeah, and uh, applique was done, a lot of applique was done with freezer paper. So it's just an old, older technique that we're using today, okay? And you may not have heard of it before. So that's the beauty of doing these sort of things. All right, so I'm just going to cut these out now. So you can see here, my um, freezer paper has stuck on there. So I can now pick this up and handle it. And to make it super easy for myself, I can just cut on that line oh, these are pretty much due for a a sharpen he that it's been about six months all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my kai scissors and um, use them because that's going to give me a cleaner cut so you want to make sure that your scissors are sharp okay so you can see there i've got a nice clean cut and i'm cutting on the line the other thing that you can use is your little embroidery scissors. So if you want, you can just cut roughly around first off if you're finding it difficult to use the um, whole piece. And then you can use your little embroidery scissors as well that you cut out. Especially for smaller pieces, I find that sometimes the big scissors can be a little bit cumbersome. So you can see there that I'm just using those ones. Or you can get your, if you've got to go right into a corner, 
you can get your little embroidery scissors and you can go around it just depends on what you're comfortable with using I mean even though I'm using my kai scissors, like I use my kai scissors, I'm getting a nice clean cut and that's what I want from my felt. I want a nice clean cut. I don't want it to look jagged or anything like that. So find the pair of scissors that work best for you, that you have the most control over. Now, for these are quite a large pair of stalk scissors. So these are quite easy to handle. They're almost like a regular size pair of scissors and they are quite sharp. So you've got those ones. As I said, these ones are good as well for little pieces and cutting like roughly around it. And then I've got my Kai scissors, which are going to go through it. Now, the paper that the freezer paper that's on it, they're not going to dull my scissors that much. So you will be able to use this without a problem. And then basically we don't have to keep it numbered or anything like that. You can reuse this paper as well. So if I wanted to, I could put it down. I'm actually doing my prep like I always do. I'm just having a multitude of prep. I will basically iron on all those things, um, all the leaves, and then basically I will cut them out and I will probably just leave the paper on them so I know that that's what, where it was. But if I wanted to make another one, say I wanted to make a matching cushion, um, or just even the tree without all the birds and everything in it, um, I can do that. I can reuse these um, probably only once or twice more. I can reuse them, but it's a very cheap and effective way of doing it without using any fusible, um, fusible uh, wadding. And this whole roll cost me $17. And as I said, there is 13 um, yards on it. And it's 15 inches wide. So you can get a lot out of it. So basically all I'm going to do today is I'm just going to continue on cutting, tracing and cutting everything out. And then when we come back next week, we will start assembling it and doing everything. So um, I will, if I will get the pattern and everything sorted um, this week and that'll be ready to go. But you will definitely need to have some different colors. In There'll be a fall um pattern and there'll be a spring pattern so think spring colors and think fall colors if you want to do both um and I'll make sure that there's a little halloweeny one in there as well and um that way you like a little witch's hat or something along those lines and then that way you can do that so if you just think those colors and look for wool felt in that and you can it's not recommended, but you can use um, craft felt. It's not as nice to work with as the wool felt. The wool felt just has that that little extra something to it and it's very enjoyable to work with. So that's something also to consider. If you've got craft felt, you can use it. Just know it's not, it's not the best option, okay? Um, it's definitely wool felt you want to go with. These little bowls, how cute are these? This, these were a little dish that I got from um, Audi and it actually had a prawn and scallop, um, like, like a little oven bake type style thing. And they are um, ceramic, uh, not ceramic, they're terracotta. So I thought, you know what, these are perfect for out here. They're neat, tidy, and I can use them and they're small enough not to take up too much room on the camera, which is really handy. Um, so if you want to, at this stage, you can just sort of cut your leaves out. If you want to work with one big piece, go for it. If you don't, just, um, yeah, just work your way around, cut your leaves out. I mean, you're still going to get waste either way. Um, and then you can just have all your leaves there. And then you sit in there watching TV and cut out all your leaves. Now, the patterns that I'm doing are not huge patterns. They are enough to do like a little coaster or a little tiny wall hanging but as I said if you want to do something a little bit more substantial and you want to um, make a cushion or something along those lines you can do it any size you want just head over to a um, if you want to make this one I'll leave the links down below where you'll be able to purchase it and um, if you want to make your own then head over to um, over to the coloring pages and um, go for it and just make a collage get creative that's what it's about it's just being getting in there and, and giving it a go so now what I'm doing as you can see I've got all my little bits and pieces there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to adding some more this is getting used for all for leaves so I'm just going to um I'll probably actually I might move on to another color 
so we can mix it up a little bit. So how many did I do on there? One, we've got four. 70 divided by four, so we've got, yeah. Yeah, I could probably get about 15 to on each one, so that's fine. But, yeah, anyway, we'll go on to another. Don't worry about my math. That that was just like full, full COVID brain then. Nothing was very coherent at all. <laughs> Um, that I am feeling much better today. You can hear it in my voice from Monday to the, the days that I didn't get on camera. A few people go, wow, I was not expecting to see you on camera um, yesterday. And the reason that I did it was one, I was, I was incredibly bored and I just wanted to, to do my floss tube and just to thank everybody for being so lovely and um, sending me all those well wishes and, and whatnot. And um, I really do appreciate that. And um, yeah, so basically I just thought, you know what, I can't lay here anymore. I just, I'm not, I went and had a nap after the video yesterday. Like I went and had a, a pretty substantial nap um, and I'm not pushing it or anything like that. I'm just, this is not hard work. I'm just sitting here and um, crafting with you. And so I think that doing something like that, other than sitting in the bed, because my room's very dark, it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have windows either like it's it's very my window is my studio and um so it's very um it can get very depressing in there and I just and I just wanted to get out and about so I went and sat in the sun yesterday um for about half an hour and just meditated I didn't take any craft with me I didn't um I didn't take anything with me I just went and sat out in the sun closed my eyes and just listen to the birds. So at the moment we have the willy wagtails, which are my favorite birds. They nest in, we've got a group of trees here. They nest in the trees here. And so you can hear them um, chirping all the time. We've got a family of sparrows over on this side of the house and you can hear them not so much at this time of the day, midday, it's usually morning and evening. They're more active. And then we have every couple of years, the kookaburras come back and nest. There's two big part palm trees but they sit out in the gum tree at the back and they chit chat there's actually two sets that are breeding here now so we have one set that's um breeding here and then over the back I think there's another set there and then they all congregate in a tree in our next door neighbor's yard which is right on our fence line and they sit out there and they talk to one another basically um and they just yeah they just talk to one another and like they they start laughing and stuff like that. And then in the afternoons, usually around two o'clock, it starts. All the rainbow lorikeets start to come in to those trees and our trees in our backyard. And they're all squawking and carrying on and, and all the rest of it. So I just went out and sat there and listened to the sounds of nature and um, just grounded myself as well. So I sat down on the ground. And when I say grounded myself, I sat down on the ground and basically just had the sun coming in at me and I was just taking in um, the sun and I was deep breathing and all the rest of it. And uh, Brendan came home about two hours later. He'd see me after the video and he goes, you probably shouldn't have done that video. You look pretty tired. And I said, yeah, I am pretty tired. I'm going to go and have a nap. Um, it wasn't a very restful nap that I had. Um, but my sleep last night was so restful after meditating. And then he, he came home about an hour after that I was doing the meditation and he just said, he goes, you look so much better. So getting out into the sun really made a difference. Um, I'm not good with being stuck in a dark room. Um, I will do it to get better, but I'm not good with it. <laughs> um, and at one stage there, it almost looked like that I was moving into my room, moving my studio into my room. I had all of my floss storage on the side of the bed. I've got like projects there. I've got um, stuff that needs to be bobinated and in a box. So I was sitting there doing some of that and it's just like, yeah, <laughs> I'm not real good at sitting still. Um, like I'm pretty sure you guys all knew this anyway, but yeah, <laughs> um, it's it is what it is. Like it's not that I have an issue. I just I like to be busy. I love to create, and I love playing with my stuff. Um, you know, it's just it's fun. I mean, I'm sure you can all relate. That one didn't stick down. So 
um, yeah, so I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to come out. I left everything set up, like I said, I was going on the video yesterday and it was good because um, I just come out this morning and basically had to do move a couple of things. This was already here. I'd already unpacked it and had a look through it um, after the video, like Jane took five minutes to look through it. Got all the supplies that I needed while I was still moving around yesterday. And then, um, yeah, and then I just basically come out this morning and now I'm just filming and what I'm doing. So you can see how easy this is. Like it's a, it's a lot of preparation and stuff like that. Um, you know, like there's little bits and pieces of this um, felt that I might be able to get little circles out and whatnot um, as well. So I won't chuck, I've got a little container just over here that um, I'm just chucking it towards. And so I won't throw that out because I might be able to use it for little circles and stuff like that a bit later to embellish. But from what I can tell, um, I have enough of everything that I, um, I need. See, like that piece there, I'd definitely be able to get a little circle out of that. So don't throw your stuff away. And as, the same with your fabrics as well. Like just grab your scrap fabrics out. You know, if you're creating something from nature, grab all your greens out and your browns and your If you're doing fall, grab out your oranges and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, and just have them there and, and sort of go through them and pull little bits and pieces out. This is a really good way of using up those scraps. I'm just happening, happening to do it with a kit form and I'm doing it with felt. That's the only difference. That's all I'm doing differently. But I am going, I think I might call it a day because my voice is starting, to, my throat's starting to get a little bit scratchy. I'll put these red ones on and I'll keep adding all the leaves to the, um, to the, the uh, felt and uh, get as many as I can on there. And um, next week we'll be ready to start laying out. I might even get some laid out. Um, and um, yeah, we'll be starting to to stitch it all down, which will be really, really good. Um, so I'm going to, as I said, I'm just going to continue doing this for the rest of the day. It's not too strenuous. I don't have to move. Everything is really close. Um, so basically um, I can just continue um, getting everything prepped and um, yeah, it'll be great. Next week we'll be doing some stitching and stuff like that. Another thing that you can add to your felt um, applique as well, especially if you're doing like Christmas stuff and all that sort of stuff, you can add like beads and sequins and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's basically just creating a piece of art with all different sorts of bits of um, bits and pieces really. But I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to call it a day. I hope that you've enjoyed the little tips and tricks that I've showed you so far. Join me again next week for Slow Stitching Saturday when we work a little bit further on this project. As I said, I will have a project for you. This was a bit of a spare of the moment um, get together and uh, starting a new project because the, the um, borrow table runner has just taken a little bit longer than I expected. So join me again next week for Slow Stitching Saturday. In fact, join me all week for different videos that I've got going up. Um, if you've made it this far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it to the number one notification. And then that way you will get all notifications. Um, if you're a returning viewer and you've yet to subscribe, make sure you do subscribe today. Maybe share this across the socials with your friends so they can join us on a Saturday and get some slow stitching in as well. But that is it from me today. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Happy stitching and happy crafting. And I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.